Canada's Justin Trudeau, one of the two American reporters he called on was Caitlin Collins of the Daily Caller, the conservative website. That sparked lots of hand wringing from the media establishment about being bypassed. So in the last three news conferences, Wolf, all of the questions to the American news media have, have been handled by conservative press. And I, I think, Wolf, there's no other way to describe it, but the fix is in. And here is the question she asked. President Trump, now that you've been in office and received intelligence briefings for nearly one month, what do you see as the most important national security matters facing us? Okay, thank you. Uh, many, many problems. And joining us now here in the studio is Caitlin Collins of The Daily Caller. Well, first of all, that was kind of a weak question because it was so open-ended. You just invited him to recite his priorities. Why not try to pin him down on something specific? I don't see it as a weak question at all because I asked a big picture question about national security. Mike Flynn was his national security advisor, and I, instead of asking a personnel question, I basically said, who are we going to war with next? I don't see how anyone on the planet can see that as a softball question. Maybe Trump didn't answer in a way that pleased people. Yes, who are we going to war with next? Who is our greatest national security threat? And what a lot of people didn't hear was the president's answer to my question. You know, they automatically were like, wow, another conservative reporter got a question. It wasn't the question we wanted answered, and they weren't pleased with it. But he brought up North Korea in his answer. Good point. Now, you said, you were quoted saying you wanted something of substance, to ask about something of substance, right. but given the huge controversy surrounding the national security advisor that within hours would lead to his firing, um, why not bring up Flynn and work Flynn into the question? Well, it didn't, he didn't resign until much later that evening, and Kellyanne Conway even went on TV maybe an hour or two after that press conference and said, that he enjoyed the full confidence of the president. My point is, wasn't that a pretty big story at the moment? It became a bigger story later on, which is why when we look back at the question I asked, that's why there's so much controversy surrounding it. But I still think that my question is more important to regular American people. You know, the 300 million people who live outside the Beltway care, like our greatest national security concern, they don't care about a personnel question about Mike Flynn. No one will remember Mike Flynn's name in two years or that this even happened, but you know what they will remember is if we get into a war with North Korea. Right, okay. Um, well, so now at this marathon presser on Thursday, and Trump called up just about everybody. Right. Um, but on the... Jim Acosta never said the fix was out, and by the way, after he got, you know, three or four questions. But let's, let's focus on where we were at that time. Of the eight American reporters called on at the four pressers with foreign leaders, uh, one was with Reuters, one was from the local D.C. station, Three were from news organizations owned by Rupert Murdoch, Fox News, Fox Business, and the New York Post. And then there were three from right-leaning outlets, David Brody of Christian Broadcasting, Katie Pavlich of Town Hall, and you. Uh, what do you make of all this grumbling that people said, well, the president's trying to avoid tough questions by not calling on a major national news newspaper or broadcast network? Right. That was another question that I got a lot after my question was, did the White House tell you what to ask? Which is... I can't decide if it's offensive or laughable because they probably are talking to the White House more than I am. Uh -huh. And you know I don't think he should only call in conservative outlets. I think he should call in the whole room. But I don't think there was this hand-wringing over who, who the president was calling on when Barack Obama refused to call on Fox News and only called, you know, on left-leaning outlets. So why is it now that it's well, you, more well, conservative? Well, the President Obama didn't only call on left-leaning outlets. But there were certain but times when he just completely he, bypassed Fox News. Or and he called on the Huffington Post or MSNBC, yeah. Right, and no one was going on TV saying the fix was in then. It's just so because it's a conservative outlet. And the daily, they're, like, not used to Daily Caller getting a question. So they're offended that the question that they wanted answered didn't get asked. But I wasn't aware that we were all supposed to go in there and ask the same question. What's the point of me being there if I'm going to ask what Jim Acosta is going to ask and, you know, Hallie Jackson? That's not my point. My point is to ask a question that's different. You know, during the first week that Trump was in office, I was the only person to ask about the Muslim immigration ban and when they were going to sign it. And then that Friday, they signed it. No one else in the room was asking about that. It was right. one of his major campaign promises. All right. Glad to have a chance to talk to you. Caitlin Collins, thanks for stopping by. Ed, some brand new Fox polls.